Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouch Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. Yep, that's me. And we are in the ultimate family hauler. We are in another minivan. This time the 2023 Toyota Sienna XLE Woodland Edition. And in this video, we're going to tell you how this off-road minivan fits our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, wasn't that long ago, we took the Chrysler Pacifica 3,000 miles up the second half of Route 66. You and I are big fans of the minivan platform. Mm -hmm. Tucker, are you a fan of the minivan? Um, yes. Safe to say here at GG Garage Shock, we like the minivan. I grew up in one. Tucker's growing up in several. Um, <laughs> You've never been a downer on the minivan. No. And here we are in Toyota's latest offering. We've already been in a Sienna. That one was the Platinum Edition with leg rests on the back seats and you rode in style with a friend to Houston, that one. This is a little bit lower on the hierarchy. What are your thoughts of this XLE Woodland Edition? Well, so far I like it. <laughs> All right, we'll start outside. <laughs> and then we'll work our way inside. I'll highlight some of the things that make it a woodland addition as we go. But what are your thoughts on the exterior styling of this one? Um, it's really interesting. A lot- Good interesting? Or... Yet to be determined. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, as far as the minivan goes, to me, it kind of looks like an SUV and a minivan had a baby. Okay. So maybe if you're not a huge fan of your typical styling of a minivan on the outside, like the shape and stuff, you may be more interested in this one because there's like just a little bit of curves. And other than um, like the longness of it, it mm -hmm. really does have a lot of SUV type mm -hmm. styling, like the hips and the... What if I told you it even had some sports car styling because there are some Supra design lines oh, on this vehicle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah, uh, it is a little bit more sportier than your typical minivan, and I like that. Okay. Um, I will say this is one of the things that is unique to the Woodland Edition. Very interesting paint on this one. What are your thoughts on the color of this one? I love one? it. It's called cement. Cement. Yeah. Well, it's not a pretty name, but it is a pretty color. <laughs> kind of a flat grayish kind of color. There's some gloss There's some to it. Blue gray. Yeah. Uh, very gray, interesting. More gray than blue, but blue gray yeah. color. Of course, we like blue gray. Yeah. Our whole house is that on the inside, but yes. So yeah, I really like it. I like the styling a lot. Look, that blue gray even comes in. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so speaking of the inside, what are your thoughts? on the interior of this one? Um, well, the first thing that stuck out to me was um, the interesting pattern on these seats. That's unique. It's like to the diamond. Yes, that is unique <laughs> to the Woodland Edition as well. So That was the first most unique thing that stuck out to me. Okay. The next thing that I really like on the interior is there's lots, lots of storage <laughs> space, lots and lots. Um, I like the design on okay. this, although it is just plastic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is fine. It would be nice if it was like wood. Yeah. But I guess this is probably uh, a more affordable. Yes, this is mid trail. Vehicle. Which, I mean, to be honest, minivans, you get a minivan to store a bunch of stuff. It's going to do some Beat hard, it up a little bit. It's, it's going to do some hauling. Yeah, it's some um, hard miles. Too. Hard miles. Yeah. Um, so the plastic makes sense. It will be easy to clean and all of that. Um, and, I, and I like that it's not just plain boring plastic. It is interesting. Interesting little design. But yeah, there's tons of little cubbies. And even the cubbies have um, versatility. Yeah, so, so you've yeah. got your phone there, but you can also put your phone there. And it's also... Um, more cup holders. More cup holders. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can have eight drinks betwixt the two of us just up here. Mm -hmm. And we won't even get started on how many are back there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six just for the second round. Mm. Yeah. And yep. even more going back. 
Yeah, I, I really like the shelf. I, th I think I like this the is the most too. practical minivan interior. You've got your Qi wireless charger. And then I can I can reach you through here. Yes, it's a really big um, undercarriage down here. Undercarriage? <laughs> What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> um, which, you know, down here we have my purse. We have yeah. our sunshade. Sun yeah. So that's, I mean, and it's big enough where you can actually, like, access it, even with the seat where it's at. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. And then there's multi-level here in the door. There's a very good size, very wide glove box up here. There's center console storage here with USB ports in it and a little place to bring your cords if you need to. So lots of storage, yeah. lots of storage. And even the base of this is rubberized. So things won't roll around or make a lot of noise. Right. Yeah, lots of Very storage. Very good, lots of storage. And I even have a little tiny cubby over here mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. something. Lots of USB. It was a little bit too small for my cell phone. Yeah. But you could put like change or yep. if you have like a parking pass yep. or something like yep. that right there. Lots right. of USB ports in here. We've got the mm -hmm. one USB A to interface with the infotainment. We've got uh, two in here I already referenced an A and a B or A and a C. We've got an A and a C back here. We've got power back here. We've got an HDMI port for Tucker's screen. So Tucker can watch mm -hmm. TV back there. Oh, yeah, there's did. a TV right there? Yeah, TV. Oh, there. so fancy. Yeah, look at there. Now, there is a problem with this. We don't have the rearview mirror camera. So while Tucker's watching TV, you're watching the, the back, back of, of the, the TV. TV. Okay. Yeah, and even in this little itty bitty teeny tiny convex mirror, we have for viewing Tucker. Uh, can't really I see I could still Tucker, see Tucker yeah. even with it now. I can see Tucker right now, too. I can see you, too. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, good segue. We've got all kinds of buttons up here for the rear hatch and the doors as well as our sunroof right up above uh, us. Teeny tiny sunroof. Yeah, we're, we're getting used to big sunroofs. This one, yeah. standard sized. But, standard uh, size. I like the little gear shift too. Yeah, and we've got different drive modes here that we can put it in. Let's see, what do we have? Eco and non-eco and sport. Mm. Eco, normal, sport. And you might be able to guess that I'm a fan of the real life gauges. Yes. <laughs> no digital gauges here, all analog gauges. What are your thoughts on that steering wheel? I like it. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's a good steering wheel. I like the um, stitching too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Stitching echoes on all the surfaces around us as well. Again, mm -hmm. that woodland grips. edition. That's the part of the Woodland mm -hmm. Edition that's that stitching. Kind of orange, light yellow, gold. Gold, babe. Gold. Okay. gold. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, quad zone. Mm, yeah, fancy. Ventilation and... Uh, can they? Do they have controls back there? It does have controls back there, and I can control it from right here. I can lock him out. So yeah, Tucker can control it back there. He has been. It's up on the ceiling in between the two passengers, so you don't have to pick a side when you're sitting back there. Thank you, sir. Um, but yeah, four zone climate controls, which is something we recently saw in a Mercedes Benz that we tested. So that's a pretty nice feature as well. Yeah. And uh, sunshades back there to keep him cool from the hot Texas sun. We are huge fans of. What about heated or ventilated seats so, or steering wheels? Yep. Yeah, we've got heated seats up front. We've got heated steering wheel up front and that's about it in this XLE. But we will pause from that for just a moment, because we are on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. Tucker, how's your wobbly head? You should see it on the internet. <laughs> you should see it on the internet. Well, I'm watching you in the teeny tiny mirror up here. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too wobbly. What about you, Holly? Uh, this is very smooth. Yeah. Especially compared to our other tester. Yeah. <laughs> which is a giant 2500 uh, Sierra from GMC. Yeah, this is like you can hardly even tell you're in a bumpy road. Yeah, yeah. Rides Very well. smooth. Rides well. And uh, so anyway, back to the quad zone climate controls. Do you know where the vents are for the rear seat passengers? Up okay. there? Yeah, in the ceiling, oh, not yeah. on the back of the center. Yeah, that's, like that's that. really nice because one of the things that we have difficulty in in cars is with a car seat, they get super hot, Yeah. Um, especially sitting out in the car mm -hmm. when you're 
out and about, oot and a boot. Um, and when you just have the vents right here, it takes a really long time to get it back there. So if it's blowing right here, that cools it off a lot. And it was there. especially bad when he was in a rear facing car seat because yes. there was no air getting to him coming from the ceiling works either way, yes. which I would say is a perfect segue to installing Tucker's child safety seat back there in the second and maybe even the third row. Installing Tucker's child safety seat here in the second row of the Toyota Sienna could not be simpler. Thanks in part to the large opening from these sliding doors. I don't have to worry about hitting another vehicle around me. And then the super slide function of these seats is really going to come into play. We'll call out there are lower latch points that are very easily accessed. The seat material actually moves out of the way, it kind of scoops out and around, making those very easy to get to. I will say before I bring it though, uh, access to the third row requires pulling up on the recline handle, which is completely useless if you have a child seat in place. It does allow for easy access to the third row, which we're going to do here in just a little bit. But uh, yeah, kind of cramps the, uh, the usability factor when you have a child seat in place. But let's go ahead and bring Tucker's forward facing Graco Extend-A-Fit car seat in place. I'm going to feed the top tether back behind the seat because there are uh, top tether anchors in this. And then getting the lower latches in is very simple. I'm actually going to give myself a little more room to climb in and get this one. And then I can bring it forward so that I can very easily and securely uh, get these tightened down and into place. That's very simple. And I can pull it even further forward uh, for access back here to the top tether. Now, I will note the seat back is very soft and squishy. So to get this really tight, you're gonna be squishing the seat fabric, the soft text. And I would see over long term, this potentially creating a problem uh, for the seating material. Otherwise, the ease of installation here in the second row is a resounding A for, or a plus for installation and a solid A for usability because, well, now I can't fold the seat forward for the easiest access to the third row, but it still slides far enough and there is that center pass through to get into the back. Now, let's take this out here and see what it's like putting it in the third row. Before I bring Tucker's car seat in, I did want to show you the third row of seats. Not typical of third rows, but we do get lower latch points here. So we have two on the uh, driver's side, one here in the center, and two on the passenger side. So that's a very nice touch. And I can show you back in the back, you get a uh, top tether strap down location in all three seats. And then for that center seat, you do get a ceiling mounted seat belt right there. So you can pull that down and attach it into place right here if you really need to attach a child seat or have someone ride here in the middle. But let's go get Tucker's car seat and see what it's like to install. Back here in the back, I will call out the headrests need to be popped back up and do allow for a little bit of room to pass that top tether through. These seats also recline. Uh, via this strap right here. So you'll need to find the perfect angle of that seat back once we get the uh, child seat here in place. But let me go get that. <laughs> Bringing it into the back seat, even with the front seat slid all the way forward, is easy, but not the most graceful of operations. So I can get back in here. I'm gonna throw that top tether strap back behind so I don't have to worry about that anymore and then it looks like I've already got the seat in the proper recline position so I'm going to go ahead and attach the lower anchor points which is not as easy as the second row of seats but it's still not that bad and then I'm having to do this whole operation on my knees versus being able to stand up at the second row. This is not something I would want to do multiple times, but it is nice to know that it can be done with latch points. But uh, we'll figure this one out, get it situated, and then we will head back to the back 
and show you just how easy it is to put in that top tether. After doing my best to crawl out of that back seat, coming back and opening the rear hatch makes it very simple to attach that top tether because, well, it's not that far away from me. So simply pull it through, attach it right there, and tighten it up. Now, you're gonna get some of that same seat action here in uh, the third row as you did in the second, but it's not quite as drastic uh, when tightening this up. It is gonna be a two-handed operation, but a very easy install even here in the second or third row of seats in the Toyota Sienna. So good job, very nice can get lots of car seats in this minivan. Really can't put Tucker seat anywhere in this. Those second row seats, not so child friendly. They kind of clamshell up, but you could put them in the back. I'm surprised he hasn't asked to ride back there. Maybe he doesn't know, <laughs> but uh, that third row of seats folds into the floor, very fat, flat. And then the second row of seats are the super slide seats. So he can go practically all the way back to the back, even in that second row of seats. This wow. is a great vehicle for adults and children alike, right? Yeah, a lot of versatility. And one feature we have to talk about in this one are the kick to open side doors. The possible kick to open, <laughs> which I have yet to get to work. Tucker gets it to work just like that. So maybe just like on the bins where he taught you how to open the sunroof, he can teach you how to open the doors. Come on. Have you sat back there in the third row seat? How how comfortable is it? It's all right. It's all right. That's okay. right. Um, the, the first four seats are definitely the ones you would want to ride in. Very chair-like, upright and comfortable. Okay. So, uh, have you noticed the floor mats? Oh yeah. So Do they come out? Yes. But so they are all what, weather, all oh, weather rubberized floor is mats. Is this special for yes. the Woodlands you know, edition? When you're out in the woods. In the wood. In the woodlands? Uh, when you come back to your vehicle, uh, you don't want to make a giant mess. You want right. to be able to easily clean it up if you do. That's true. And this is a car that you could easily clean it up. You know what? I like these. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Fixed in place armrest here. Yeah. Uh, back in the back seat, they have fold down armrests on both sides. So again, you're sliding them. You can't affix them anywhere but the seat, but nice. Does your cubby on your side have a shelf? Yep. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So, all kinds of storage in this one too. So how does this thing drive? We've already gone down the wobbly head test, but uh, behind the wheel, how's the power been? How's, how, explain. <laughs> <laughs> I think the power has been really good. I haven't had any issues getting up and going. It's smooth mm -hmm. drive. Um, so when Toyota introduced this uh, new Sienna in 2020, the big news was all Siennas were hybrids and this obviously is no different uh this one is an all-wheel drive version and gets over 30 miles per gallon wow um in city driving and highway driving I believe 35 36 uh across the board so that's insane um have you noticed the engine coming on and off because, i haven't because have you I, only audibly, like I can hear okay. it kind of revving a little, uh, but I, I can't feel it like shake or judder no, the vehicle I like it. Um, many other start-stop systems have. In and you know traffic. that's something I hate. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you can drive this around uh, like a Prius in EV mode at low speeds. You're uh, backing out of the driveway, for example. Oh, it gave me a little tickle. On. Uh, on the uh, steering, steering wheel. Because you were getting too close to the lines. Getting close to the lines. Yeah. Interesting. I do like that. A lot of safety to feature. Toyota safety sense features baked okay. into this one. So all around, very good. I will ask, uh, so I drove this one back from Dallas where I actually picked it up. I'm going to scroll through here. We're getting 32.3 MPG, mm -hmm. which is 32.4 now. Oh. I always get better. Yes. yes my uh, but driving this back from Dallas, uh, getting a little less than the, than the window sticker, but mm -hmm. overall pretty good numbers. It also has the speed limit up here on the dash, mm -hmm. which I like the current yeah. speed limit. 
Now, the higher trim that we had, the platinum trim, did have a heads-up display. This one does not, oh, which okay. is a little disappointing. But. Yeah, there's a couple of features that we have come to like that this vehicle doesn't have. And I'd say the head-up display is one of them. And then also, there's no memory seats. Yeah, for us, we would have to get... Uh, we would we're, have we're, to we're get. We're a little spoiled when it so comes spoiled. to. The lumbar support is very nice. The oh, seats good. are very comfortable. Don't you think? Yes, I, I think they are. And like I said, I, I drove this back two hours from Dallas. Um, I'll, I'll pulled up the window sticker. 35 MPG city, 36 highway, 35 combined. So yeah, again, getting a little less than that in our time with it. But otherwise, it's a very comfortable ride. It's very easy. Uh, I noted in driving it around, the steering is light, but not so much that you feel like barely turning the wheel, you're gonna turn into something. Like, it does not yeah. feel like a heavy vehicle. It does not feel like a heavy vehicle, yeah. no. It, it doesn't feel like I'm struggling at all. And to be honest with you, if I didn't know it was a minivan, I mean, I would ha probably have to consciously remember that it was a minivan, so I'm not like cutting people off in traffic. <laughs> okay. So that brings us to, I've got the window sticker. What do you think the MSRP of this XLE Woodland all-wheel drive version? 48. No, but close. Okay, higher? Yes. 52. 51,014. Okay. So. No commentary there? Just okay. Well, uh, how much was the one with the head-up display? Oh, that was in the 60s. Oh, it was in the 60s. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I mean, 51, I would probably, if it was in the 50s, I'd probably still want to do some shopping around. But mm -hmm. as far as a vehicle that can haul the whole family, mm -hmm. great gas mileage, um, all of that, I mean, it, it's definitely worth the value. Yeah. And if you, like you said, you can drive, um, drive it in EV mode, mm -hmm. which is nice because most of the driving that we do is puttering around town yeah. that we could easily yeah. do the EV mode, which is nice. And, and the last, option. And the last minivan we had was the Chrysler Pacifica e-hybrid, which was a plug-in hybrid. That one allowed you to putter around town completely in electric for the first 30-ish miles, mm -hmm. um, which would work better. But when we got that one out on the highway, we were seeing in the 20s uh, in MPG, this thing is 30s all the time. Sure. So this really better package if you're planning on doing lots of trips uh, mm -hmm. for fuel economy. How, how would you say this one interior packaging driving characteristics and all that where do you think you know take the pricing and the luxury because these aren't trim to trim how do you think this compares to the chrysler i like this one better yeah 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 um i think so which one was more expensive this one no the chrysler was because it oh, was then, the pinnacle <laughs> trim well then that makes it an even easier decision that i i like driving this one yep. more so far and i like feel like well the oh yeah because it was the pinnacle mm -hmm. that styling was really pretty and really luxury but the seats are just not the most comfortable they were a little firm these are They're softer firm these are softer um yeah even even the way it drives i like it yep. better even before knowing the price difference. Mm -hmm. and on that note, if you want to see more from Holly, see some behind the scenes stuff from her, you can go find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, Threads, YouTube, all the things, again, at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us in the ultimate family hauler, the Toyota Sienna Woodland Edition. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. We all ready?
I'll take the silence as yes. I'm ready. Uh, I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. All right, back here. Oh, fart. <laughs> My knee. <laughs>